It could be some quiet little African backwater, but it isn't. This is the village of Ribkona in southern Sudan, and nothing here is as it used to be. This is where the road begins, the road that is said to have forced a whole rural population to flee from their homes. A year ago, Ribkona was a village with just a few thousand inhabitants. Today, it's a market town where tens of thousands of people live. They have come here to escape the fighting in the region. Sitting with the local military leader is Ian Lundin, managing director of the Swedish company Lundin Oil. He's trying to get to the bottom of the accusations that have been hurled against his company. Thank you. I, I think uh, I would also like to say that um, for us to be able to, to work here and to develop your resources in the best way, it's very important that one day there will be peace in your country. We are looking for eyewitnesses to the latest skirmishes and find Susanna Garud, who has worked in the area for eight years. She runs a German relief organization which provides education for farming folk. We ask her about Lundin Oil and to what extent the company is responsible for driving people from their homes. I, I don't see the, res uh, you know, the responsibility of Lundin is coming in. They, they don't have a responsibility I, the way that I see it. It has been said that people were driven away from their homes because Lundin wanted to build this road. Well, that I don't agree with because actually the villages along, I mean, I, I, I read recently that the accusation that thousands were displaced to, to make way for, for the road. Now, that's not true because actually the majority of the people who were displaced because of the fighting were on the old Chevron Road going to Lair and not on the current Lundin Road. And the old road going to Lair also forms the boundary between the Lek and the Jukan. So when there's fighting in Lek, they push toward that boundary and vice versa. When there's fighting in Jukan, people push towards that road because they're fleeing into the respective um, safe, safe areas. But when you talk to people here in this area, w what kind of reactions do you get? How do they feel about the old companies? Well, I mean, people, I mean, we speak to a lot of people. Um, nobody says anything about them. I mean, a lot of people have jobs with the oil companies. But those, those who have been displaced because of the fightings, do they blame the oil companies for that? They never mention the oil companies. And we have, in this area, we have, um, we have <coughs> 3,000 households that we are, are giving seeds and tools to and ag agricultural um, extensions. And they don't mention, uh, they, they're not coming in and saying, oh, it's terrible, we've been displaced because of the oil. They will come in and say they've been displaced because of, of the factional fighting. The picture Susanna Garud gives is confirmed informally by other foreign relief workers. But they refuse to be interviewed on camera. That's how sensitive the question of guilt is here in southern Sudan. To publicly finger someone as guilty of displacement and torture of civilians could create serious problems for the relief organisations whose work is dependent both on the good favour of the SPLA and the government. This is the infamous Londine Road. Ian Londine is trying to weigh up the SPLA commander, Peter Cadet. Uh, he wanted to be the new commander uh, of some. When it became apparent that he wasn't going to take over, he then just took his followers away right. and uh, we know formed his own group. Do we know how big is, uh, how many troops he has? Uh, it's always difficult to get any estimates from I mean, the authorities on how many uh, rebels there are, are. I think partly because they don't know themselves for sure. Right. Um, you know, rebels seem to sort of drift in and drift out. Uh -huh. uh, we stop to take a break and suddenly we've got visitors. A group of child soldiers appear as if from nowhere. They are from one of the militia groups who are fighting one another in the area, though it's hard for an outsider to say which group it is. How do you feel about this? Child soldiers protecting the oil fields? 
Well, I think uh, to protect, protecting the whole field is, is, a, is a general generalization. I'm very upset about seeing child uh, soldiers in general. I think uh, I have children myself, and to see uh, children of this age uh, carrying arms uh, is a very disturbing uh, fact. The civilians here describe the fighting between the SPLA and the militia. All our cows, mosquito nets and food were taken. Our houses burned and we were left with nothing except this water that you can see. Gadet says he's coming to kill people again, even though we lost all our cattle since last autumn. For example, my cattle shed was burnt in the last attack. All we are looking for now is food. We are starving. The picture that emerges of the war in the region is complicated. Various newer groups are fighting amongst themselves, mostly over livestock. Peter Cadet, who is also a newer but belongs to the SPLA guerrillas, creates political unrest in the region with raids on the civilian population. Lea Dua said, let these people develop our area. We accept this wholeheartedly. Only Gadet doesn't like it. We can now use cars without even paying. That's never happened before. It would be good if the company could provide job opportunities for us and food. I live here. Most people left this area not only because of Gadet, but also because of hunger. Some time ago, Lea Dieu said that water will be provided for us. Only three things contributed to the people deserting this area. No water, no food and no cattle. To the Nuers, cattle means wealth. Those Nuers who manage to get jobs with the oil companies usually spend half their salary on cows. The nearer we get to the oil rig, the more people we see. We meet some women who are selling food by the wayside. What concerns us women about the road is that it brings trucks full of food even during the rains. We like it except that our own people are working against it. Londine discovered oil in the area at the end of February this year and has now moved its rig further south. Soon it might have two sources to exploit. The oil business in southern Sudan has been heavily criticised by human rights organisations. Susanna Garoud is not convinced that these organisations have got it right. Let's say Londine moved out. Uh, definitely, if they gave up the concession, it would be given to somebody else. And there is a possibility that it would be given to Chinese. It could be given to anybody, but the Chinese are a possibility. And I don't think that they would be um, so vigorous about um, observing human, human rights as, as Londine would be, um, or as, as um, the Canadians are in, in the Hegelich area.